If you want your louder and quieter parts of the audio hearable comfortably, the compression effect is the answer. We will see a detailed demo on how to use Audacity compression, but before that, a bit about compression in general. In theory, compression reduces dynamic range. Dynamic range is the difference between the loudest and quietest audio amplitude. In this illustration, this is the dynamic range. Please note, dynamic range is calculated based on the recorded audio, it does not take noise floor into account. As compression reduces this dynamic range, louder parts become closer to quieter parts. This way the listener notices less difference in their sound level, and it helps to listen to both the quiet and loud parts comfortably. Another thing about the compressor is, the audio data is not lost but compressed. So no clipping happens hence no distortion in the sound. Though compressed sound feels a bit different, it is not that much of an issue as we always hear compressed sounds. Compression always happens based on the threshold. This is the threshold line in this illustration. Anything above this line will get compressed and other audio will be left as it is. If we move the threshold level beyond the loudest part, nothing will get compressed. As we now know the basics of compression, let's see how it is done in Audacity. I will be using this audio clip for the demo. You can already see these two parts of the audio has a different sound level. The compressor can reduce this gap, so it will sound more equal than it actually is. To apply compressor, select the audio, go to Effects, Compressor. This graph gives you an indication of how your audio will be shaped with the current chosen settings. In Audacity, two types of compression are available, downward compression and upward compression. In this illustration, we have seen the downward compression. Downward compression takes down the level above the threshold. Upward compression works in the opposite way, it's level up the audio below the threshold. This checkbox on compress based on peaks decides which compression to apply. If you click the help icon at the bottom right, you will go to detailed documentation on Audacity compression. You should go through these docs if you want to learn Audacity like a pro. For example, here it says Audacity uses the look ahead feature to determine the peaks in compression. This kind of information can help you understand how Audacity works behind the scene. If you scroll down a bit, you will see an explanation of what each setting does. Compress based on peaks decides if the peak values of waveform or RMS value will be used for threshold. The default value is unchecked and when unchecked, RMS is used. This is the most important concept of Audacity compression. If you do not understand this concept, chances are your compression setting is actually doing no compression and you are wasting this effect. The main thing is RMS is used for downward compression and peak values are used for upward compression. Let's get back to Audacity and figure out how to capitalize on this concept. I am making this window a bit bigger to see how it is changing with the change of different settings like threshold or ratio. Notice at this point the line has taken a different slope. In x-axis we have the input level, and in y-axis we have the output level. This downward slope means output is not increasing at the same level as the input after this point. This is actually the threshold point which is minus 12 dB and after that this slope has changed. If I change the threshold level, this slope point will change. Threshold shifts the slope point whereas the ratio decides the slope shape. The default ratio of 2 to 1 means an increase of 2 dB in the input will result in a 1 dB increase in output. 4 to 1 means a 4 dB increase in the input will result in a 1 dB increase in output. You see it is increasing slowly when I move the ratio slider to 4 to 1. If I take the ratio slider to the lowest possible ratio here, you see this line has almost the same slope all the ways. A ratio of 10 to 1 is making the output increase too little after the threshold point. Compress based on peaks is unchecked, which means it will apply downward compression. For downward compression, we have to measure the RMS value for threshold and noise floor. Let's measure the noise floor first. We see a couple of silent or noisy parts, select the one with more noise. After selecting the noise, go to Analyze and click Measure RMS, 
Measure RMS comes from a plugin and is not enabled by default. You have to go to Add Remove Plugins and have to enable the Measure RMS plugin. Take a note of this value. For me, it is minus 61. For threshold, identify and measure some loud peaks. Measure those peaks and the threshold value has to be less than those peaks. This peak is at minus 21, so a threshold value less than that will apply compression to that peak. You can select a wider range of audio to measure peak RMS. For example, this is minus 25. You should measure multiple peaks to have a good idea of their values. As we are using downward compression, only the louder audio should get compressed, not the quieter ones. If the quiet sounds also get compressed, there is no benefit from the compressor then. You can measure the RMS of the quieter sound to make sure the threshold does not get below that. I will duplicate this track to compare it with not compressed sounds. I will apply the compressor effect on this first track, select it, and go to the compressor. Let's set the threshold value to minus 25. So anything above minus 25 dB will get compressed. From our measurement, the noise floor was minus 61. We have to set it a value higher than minus 61, for example, minus 50 dB. Noise floor value has to be greater than noise dB, but less than quieter sound level. I can also choose minus 55, but minus 50 looks safe enough as it is quite higher than quieter sounds. The ratio is one of the key settings of compression. Default ratio is 2 to 1 which may not be ideal for most cases. Ratio 4 to 1 can be a good compression ratio. Start with that and then increase it if you need more compression to the loudest peaks. Keep in mind, the more the compression ratio, the different the sound will be. So try to be within 3 to 1 to 5 to 1 and experiment which ratio is working well for a particular piece of audio. Attack time can be set in the default lowest value as you see in the slider. Attack time means how fast the compressor should become active when it crosses the threshold level. Release time decides how soon the compressor is released after the volume level drops below the threshold level. I found no specific case to change those times and you can also use the default values. Uncheck this makeup gain checkbox as it will normalize to 0 dB after applying compression. I will normalize to a different value so unchecking this. Click OK with all these values set and the audio will be compressed. You can see a difference in the shape after compression is applied. If you do not see any kind of changes in shape, that means your compression settings are not right. Let's now normalize both these tracks to minus 3 dB and compare. I haven't added any other effects in the raw audio recording, so some noise can be seen. You can already see some visual differences between these tracks. The quieter part of the audio in the compressed track seems louder. Let's hear both the tracks one by one. I will use this recording for compression demo. I'm talking a bit far from the microphone to get a quieter recording. I will use this recording for compression demo. I am talking a bit far from the microphone to get a quieter recording. I am talking a bit far from the microphone to get a quieter recording. I am talking a bit far from the microphone to get a quieter recording. The quieter part in the compressed track is louder than the uncompressed one. So far we have seen the downward compression. If you remember there is another type of compression called upward compression. When compress based on peaks is checked, upward compression is used. I will keep downwards compression for this track and will apply upward compression in the below track and compare. From history I am keeping the compressor but undoing the normalize effects. I will apply upward compression in this track. Remember when you use compress based on peaks checkbox, upward compression is used. Let's find out the threshold and noise level for upward compression. For upward compression, peak values in the waveform are used, 
not the RMS value we calculated for downward compression. There are two ways to measure the peak level. You can switch to DB display for the timeline and volume level can be seen here. I need to make this track bit bigger to clearly see the levels. To find the threshold level for upwards compression, you have to measure the audio level of the quieter parts. I am talking a bit far from the microphone to get a quieter recording. Peaks of the quieter levels are around minus 24, let's say minus 22. With all these measures in hand, let's go to the compressor effect. For upwards compression, the threshold has to be more than the peaks of quieter audio. I will choose minus 18, so the sound less than minus 18 dB will grow more than the sounds above minus 18. The quieter part of the audio was minus 22 dB, so it is less than minus 18 dB. The threshold should not go above the louder peaks which are around minus 15 dB as we see here. Of course, we have to check this box as this check enables upward compression. For the noise floor, I will choose minus 45 as the noise is around minus 50 from this meter. It is not like you have to rely on this meter. You can play a piece of audio and check where it is hitting in the playback meter. I will keep the ratio and other values as it is and apply compression. Let's switch back to the linear display and compare both the tracks with downward and upward compression. From history, we can see two compressor effect is applied. History helps me to remember which effects already applied and in which order. Once again I will normalize both the tracks to minus 3 dB. I am showing you both upward and downward compression, so that you can experiment and find out which one works best for you. Let's hear both the sounds. I will use this recording for compression demo. I am talking a bit far from the microphone to get a quieter recording. I will use this recording for compression demo. I am talking a bit far from the microphone to get a quieter recording. The difference between this two compression is very subtle in this case, but you should experiment. Also, keep an eye on the noise floor as compression tends to bring that up. You can apply noise reduction if the noise is too much. A combination of four or five effects can make your sound better and compression is one of them. Please follow the card on the screen to get some quick tips on which effects to apply to get better sound in post-production. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.